My name's Dave DeBow, founder of MoneyPartnerFormula.com, and this show is built for everyday real estate investors who are actively doing deals and looking to scale using other people's money. So if you're an active real estate investor and you want to get featured on the show to talk about your own real estate and capital raising experiences, then just go to DaveInterviewsYou.com. Now let's get rolling with this episode and remember to subscribe for daily interview content. All right, guys. Welcome to Property Profits Podcast. I'm your host, Bryce Kaminsky, filling in for the fearless Dave Dubow. And have you ever wondered how artificial intelligence is revolutionizing real estate marketing, making it more engaging and cost-effective than ever? Today, my special guest is Andrew Billack, a real estate investor and the mind behind RealtorHub.ai, an AI-driven content generation service. Get ready to uncover the secrets of transforming your real estate marketing strategy Andrew, welcome to the show. Excited to hear more about this tool. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Bryce. Really excited. Well, let's start with the real estate investor side, because to really understand why the marketing is so important, you got to figure out why it drove you to that position. So take us to the beginning of the story and how did you get into real estate? Why are you still in it? Yeah, so um, I, I've been wanting to, let's go back a few years here. Um, 2021 is when I bought my first property, but a few years prior to that, I was um, eyeing real estate investing. It was something that was really interesting to me and I wanted to get in and build some long-term wealth. And it, it's just like really, really fun to be a part of. Mm -hmm. So um, I just didn't know where to start. And so initially in 2021, I hired a coach. Um, I figured it was one of those things to kind of supercharge your growth. You can make some really expensive mistakes. So I had yeah. to invest in, in doing that. And it was probably the best thing I'd ever done. And I began investing in Southwestern, uh, Ontario, the golden horseshoe, I guess. Um, first property I bought was in Welland, um, single family home that, uh, we, we did it burr style, um, and we converted it into a duplex, um, everything was kind of on, on the rise back then, you know, there's the, the golden era, I, lose. no one really kind of appreciated it until it it left mm -hmm. um and so after i bought that first one by the time that one was finished it was about eight months down the line uh, i bought a second property in um, welland as well single family home that we converted into a triplex um, wow. and that's about when interest rates kind of started skyrocketing right towards the end uh when i had to do my refi there so um my bird journey um it was pretty clear cut in the beginning, but uh, I had to pivot. And actually the next property I bought, um, the kind of final piece of my portfolio currently to date is a property in Costa Rica. Um, mm -hmm. It's uh, near um, Tambor Beach uh, near Montezuma uh, in the Guanacaste region. And uh, it uh, they just finished building it. And I'm so excited to go down. I'm going down next month. So it's been the, the gist of my real estate uh, investing journey over the last few years. I'm excited mm -hmm. to kind of develop more, uh, develop more, build more properties and, and expand outside of Toronto. That's where I live outside of Ontario and Canada, actually. Yeah. Cause it's, uh, certainly better weather when you're looking at heading down to your other income property. So what are you going to do with that thing in Costa Rica? Um, you know, first thing I thought was, you know, Airbnb, that's kind of the lifeblood of, uh, the tourism economy down there. Um, mm -hmm. everyone and their mothers who owns an investment property down there, Airbnbs, uh, short-term rentals are are pretty much the lifeblood of of any any type of investing you do down there. But uh, I, I want to enjoy it as well. Um, for the most part, it's it's a great jumping off pad. I go down there to Costa Rica two months of the year, usually coldest months here, February, March. Um, but uh, it's a great way to just kind of like offset my costs um, as I rent that out. Uh, you know, it's great income that's coming in that I can then use to just rent another spot that I can stay in. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's nice when one hand pays uh, the other, especially with something that you're doing anyway. Right. So um, why, why Costa Rica? Why not? Like uh, people are always talking about Belize and things like that. What, what made you decide that uh, Costa Rica was the place to be? I'd been down to Costa a few times before um i love to surf there's great surfing there it's mm -hmm. a direct flight from toronto about uh, i think it's like four hours just over four hours it's i mean my sister yes. also lived down there for spend four hours on the 401 or spend four hours on the airplane and be in costa rica sunshine oh, monkeys man. the ocean surfing i mean it, it really just you got to twist my arm to, to to choose between those two options yeah right so 
let's uh let's talk a little bit more about what do you like about real estate so far with the different strategy you're doing but why why do real estate and continue to do real estate what do you like so much about it I kind of, I, I like the gamification of it. I mm. mean, if you can kind of delay that short-term impulse for, for returns, mm. it's really nice to kind of build up different um, aspects of your real estate um, portfolio. For me, it's mm. kind of like, I'd love to buy a few properties every single year. Um, mm. In the beginning, that seemed like such a stretch to me. And now that I've got some properties underneath my belt that just, it, it didn't seem like that big of a jump. And every single time that you continue to buy property, you know, from, from day one that you have that one, you're building that leverage. And it's just great when, you know, you sit back, you know, if you have put in great tenants or, you know, if you're going long-term, midterm, short-term, whatever that is, you know, that mortgage gets paid down every single month, you know, you've got to mm -hmm. deal with some headaches here and there, but the ability for you to like come back to the bank every once in a while, you're like, Hey, like, I can refinance and pull out hundred K, you know, whatever, mm -hmm. less, more, whatever that may be and flip it into another property. Like that. I, I love that. I love that the choice that I made back in the past pays dividends in the future. And I can go around and, and keep doing that. It's for me that I, I love that. It's like, thanks past Andrew for helping me out today. Yeah. That's the really the thing. Yeah. <laughs> Well, the time machine, you should go back, buy this property. It's going to be buy more property before it's too late. So, you know, you've been doing stuff in investing and you understand the investment side. What brought you to this realtorhub.ai idea? I mean, AI is blowing up all over the place. I use it on the daily. The intro for the show here is written by Chad GPT with the different programs that I use to put it together. But what made you think, I'm going to do this. Um, I've got too much time on my hands. I need more things to do. Yeah, great question. So um, I was actually looking at uh, hiring someone to um, do my social media for me. Um, mm -hmm. I looked at some different marketing companies and I, I it, it was insane. The prices that kind of landed on my desk. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. It's um, like thousands of dollars for, you know, static images, maybe a reel here, everything on top of that is an upsell. And then AI comes around. I mean, you could pretty much put together like an AI stack of like Canva, Chad, GBT. Um, there's a couple of other AI, like commercially available um, video AI um, softwares. And mm -hmm. you have your marketing stack right there for a yeah. fraction of the cost. And I think we're seeing a big transition now of what used to be the status quo of these marketing agencies that are able to charge thousands of dollars and everyone just accepted it as is. And now mm -hmm. we're seeing a complete revolution of that, the, the, the marketing agency per se into easily accessible AI tools. Um, but yeah. that also comes with the ability. It's funny because I have some, some um, prospects for my uh, marketing agency that leverages AI and we build out funnels as well for, for real estate agents and real estate investors. But, you know, I have people that come to me, they go, well, you know, this seems pretty straightforward. Why can't I do it myself? And I love it because that's, I'm pretty sure, you know, if you rewind when the digital, the age of digital marketing was amongst us in the past, everyone would be like, well, why couldn't I do that myself? And I always yeah, come back go to the and same start thing. a Facebook ad campaign and be my guest, go and dig in that. Like every time I, I think, oh, I'm going to do a Facebook ad campaign and I load the long unending thing and it's got all these options like yes anyone can do it can you do it with a result yeah results and a lot of the time it's it comes down to time as well i mean mm -hmm. people are like yeah i they, they convince themselves that they can do it themselves and they totally can't but here's yeah. the thing if you run a business if you have hundreds of thousands of dollars in in investments and in properties and raising capital or, or selling properties Okay, do you have the time? Do you want to set the time aside with AI making those tasks worth, I don't know, 10, 12, 15, 20 dollars an hour? Do you want to be doing Maybe 20 dollars an hour? Five dollars an hour. You know, it's crazy. You can generate um videos from long form in 12 minutes with a subscription. And what used to take me before AI really started chopping video, oh, man, it, it would be manual manual process editing uh throwing the words on and this was not even a year ago this would have been like the fall of 20 uh 22 where things were still kind of in the in the stone age and now i just 
put the thing in and you know i'm really excited to um check out your tool because i'm a huge proponent of collapsing time frames because you're right people either have time or money and if you have lots of money you probably have no time and if you have lots of time chances are you don't have that much money so it's like which one are you going to use your money or your time and if you have a lot of money you're like thinking okay well do you really have the time to do the little under the hood stuff it's not automated yet it's not perfect but do you really have the time like be real with yourself and it the answer is usually if you have the money you probably don't have the time so just outsource the thing you outsource so many things but yet marketing seems like something people want to, for some reason, keep to themselves and do themselves. And then what's the result usually, Andrew? Yeah, no, they, they end up coming back to nothing. you anyways. <laughs> <laughs> they do nothing. They put out a couple of reels and uh, they go social silent and nothing happens. So, yeah, we're not reinventing the wheel here. We're just collapsing. Like you said, it was a great, great example. We're collapsing the, the amount of time it takes and we're doing it at a fraction of the cost. Honestly, we're reducing, you know, traditional marketing costs for just social media posting, like 50 to 70%. And on top of that, you know, it's evolved into, well, for real estate agents and for real estate investors, I mean, at the end of the day, the lifeblood of those businesses is leads. So whatever your end result is, whether you want to buy a house, sell a house, raise money, whatever it is, you need leads. And yeah. so with this AI revolution we're going through and with realtorhub.ai that we have, um, creating content. We're also building out really effective Instagram funnels. Um, I don't know. There's probably a lot of people who haven't heard of the comment to opt-in feature, but it's literally, it's, it's, if you yeah, have a great I, value I've proposition. Commented to opt-in already on things where it's like comment this keyword and it actually like popped up and just let me click on it. I didn't even have to type it in. And, uh, yeah, I got the free ebook or whatever, and I'm in the funnel. Yeah. Now I'm getting the emails and the free ebooks coming out tomorrow, and I'm totally in a comment to uh, – I'm in one of those funnels right now. Yeah, yeah, and this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to break down those barriers. Like, you know, people are having a hard time, like you said, understanding that you got time or money, you know, with, with social media and content creation. Like, don't, don't sit there and, and sit on your hands and think you're going to do it. You know, you can hire us, and we'll do it at a fraction of the cost. And then people don't even even like conceptualize like funnels. Like you, you need a proper funnel. Like this cheap AI, use that to post social media, have a killer lead magnet. You know, the, the, if there's one thing people can take away from this is that your, your lead magnet, whatever it is, whatever your goal is in your business, mm -hmm. it should be something that people would pay you for, that you're giving away for free. That's what yeah. you need to do. You need to have something that's so valuable that this is something that you would charge thousands of dollars for that you are willing to give away for free. And I guarantee your leads will come rushing through the door because that value proposition is what is the easiest form of social currency out there that is now through Instagram funnels, through uh, comment to opt-in features. It's really easy to get in the hands of your leads and mm -hmm. it, they'll be happy to exchange something that's worth a, a substantial amount of money for an email. And that's and the way it's not even, it doesn't even have to be that valuable. Like I commented to opt in on uh, like a mini course and uh, an ebook, but it was that, that it was so easy for me yeah. to step into the funnel. I might as well have tripped walking down the street. like, well, oh, now I'm in this funnel. Cause it was just came up, boom, boom. And I'm starting to get things. And I think it was even a, a chat bot talking to me. Yeah. So, and I didn't even care. I just wanted the ebook and I wanted the access and it took me to a website and, you know, very easy. So how is that transforming your real estate business for yourself? So by sharing what I'm doing and especially the Costa Rica piece, um, by sharing about what I'm doing, whether it's curiosity or interest, I, I'm not necessarily sure what my next property or what my next investment is. But in the meantime, if I can share and educate about what I'm doing, that's traditionally not the norm, which is kind of investing out of country. Mm -hmm. um, people are interested about that. That's a, yeah. that's a general conversation topic. So if I can get leads in through the door just by educating and talking about something, and now I own that list, I own that audience. Mm -hmm. and, you know, when I'm ready to raise my my next raise capital for my next deal, or ready to invest, then you know, shoot them an email. <laughs> Shoot them a quick email, add them to the newsletter. So 
you know, with everything that you've accomplished so far in real estate, what would you say your biggest challenge is these days? It's really easy to get caught up in the noise of what's happening. Um, if there's a particular strategy that you're interested in, or if there's something that was really working for you before, um, I think in the beginning when interest rates were higher, it, it, it really kind of put me in like a quicksand situation where I'm like, yeah. well, I, I'm not sure what to do next. I'm not really, there's deals to be made. There's always deals to be made. There's always a next move. I think it's just um, finding some resolve and some guidance from people that you trust and mm -hmm. finding resolve in your own ability to kind of navigate a tricky situation. Um, I mean, for me, like I got in at 2021, things were just so up and up and up and up. It's, yeah. you know, and so you know, it's my first down cycle. So I knew it's at the beginning of my real estate investing career. So it's, if I could impart what I went through, it's talk to someone who knows what they're doing that you trust and mm -hmm. find different ways to invest. If that's going to be your long-term goal. Mm -hmm. um, I'm sure there's a lot of people that were investing in real estate here that kind of rode the high wave. And then when the down wave comes, they're like, yeah, you know what? I don't, I don't know if real estate investing is for me. Yeah. They're on the bench now. You know, everyone's a genius in an up market. So yeah, exactly. You know, it's interesting you say that because I was listening to Ty Lopez the other day on one of his uh, social feeds. I can't remember whether it was Instagram or Facebook or whatever, but it was a short and he said, um, I sample information from a lot of sources and I only dive deep on credible sources. So he says he spends 90% of his decision and his, his motion and things that he actually dives deep on. He spends 90% of that, his time consuming that instead of splitting his focus on like, okay, I'm going to watch a little bit of this and like 30% here and 30% here and 30% here. He gets all of his decisions and his foundations from like one or two credible sources, as opposed to like Frankensteining together a real estate strategy, like find one, dive in, go 90% in on that one mentor or that one strategy, because it's easy in today's day and age to get, oh, well, maybe if I take this piece and that piece and I put together some sort of weird strategy and, you know, maybe that's going to work out for you. Well, no probably stick and he says oh i just you know spend 90 percent of my time consuming one mentality so that i don't get stuck in the especially in real estate shiny object syndrome was, oh it's this month is rent to own and next month is multifamily multifamily is the big jump on now everyone yeah wants our, attention, our attention spans true. are very fragmented in today's day and age especially with social media so if you follow a lot of different people doing a lot of different strategies um you know you, you like you'll, you'll sit there you won't end up doing anything well, I'm on this podcast here interviewing every different strategy. So I'm like, shiny objects are flying at me all day. It's like, oh, Costa Rica, oh, Belize, oh, I should go down and do this. But you're, yeah, you are right. It, you have to be, um, you know, you can certainly become fragmented with all the things. So when, when looking at the way you're doing deals, especially now um, looking at Costa Rica, how do you plan to fund that sort of thing? Yeah, so it, it presents a whole different um, slew of challenges because um, as an expat, it's really hard to get um, financing down there. So you're paying 100% out of pocket. Yeah. So the kind of play here for me is I, I have one property down there right now. Um, it's just it just finished um, completion. Mm -hmm. I have to go furnish it um, next month. I'm heading down end of January 2024. And I want to buy another property in this development. Um, mm -hmm. It's this incredible development, gated community on the back of a nine hole golf course, eight minute walk to the beach. It's, it's stunning. But the problem is, is that you need to come up with capital um, because yeah. you are not getting financing. And so it's, it's a bit of like risk, risk reward here because um, if you have to put up hundred percent of the capital and there's no financing and then, mm -hmm. you know, your the, the ability for you to leverage that, I mean, any equity that you have in there, you know, you might have to explore different options to pull any of that equity out and move it into a separate investment. So it's not for the faint of heart, but at the same time, since I've been to Costa Rica a few times, I've been there over the years, the amount of growth that is happening, the amount of investment that's coming in, mm -hmm. I mean, part of me is excited from a real estate investment side of being like, wow, we're, this is going to explode because there's so much investment. There's a lot of money coming in, but then there's another side of me that's like, you know, it's the jungle. It's this beautiful, serene, tropical paradise that 
I'm a little worried that there's certain elements of it that are going to become so commercialized that I've seen in different places of the world that I've been to a couple of times, like the Bali's of the world. I went there 10 years apart. And from what it was to what it is now, it's just investment. You, you have like coach buses coming down these roads that don't even have the proper infrastructure for. And then you have the mm-hmm. Tulum's of, uh, in, in Mexico that were just paradise, like barren jungle before. And now it's just like a destination party hotspot. And I feel Costa Rica is headed towards that a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I love it. I still have the best of both worlds. And um, I, I know that even with this equity that's going to be sitting there, I mean, I bought this property a year and a half ago for 140000 and U.S. And too bad, too bad. Stunning. Like I said, eight minute walk from the beach. And someone in that in our in our complex sold theirs for two hundred and ten thousand um, last week. Damn. So I mean, it's, it's like just just it just sitting there. The, the the appreciation I think is the play is going to be really great. But the challenge is going to be how do you leverage that equity that you gain there? Yeah, it's like uh, you know, it's there because it's there. It's physically there. But what's the play? How do you do it? It might just be like sit around and wait and sell it for 500 in three years or something like that if it really takes off so when looking at deals costa rica or toronto or ontario in general are you a find the deal and then get the money or do you prefer to have the capital lined up and then go looking for deals no i think for myself it's you you find the deal because if the deal is great the money is just the money i mean you anyone can find money anywhere um, that's yeah. one of my limiting beliefs when I first got into real estate, I was so worried about like, where am I going to get the money from? And then, mm-hmm. you know, as soon as you get through, through your first deal where you raise some money, you realize everyone has money that, 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 that they're trying to, to, to give out, to lend out. And yeah. so, um, it's, you got to find the deal, find the deal and the money will come, um, put it under contract. Um, you got a great deal, source it and you'll, you'll be able to find, find the money after that. So deal first money later. Um, that, that's it. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I've always see. I started my career with money, and in because I was under uh, in an acquisitions team, so I never was out there looking at deals with my pockets turned out. It was always like, oh, I've got a two million dollar line of credit. That's how I started in real estate. So it was like, go buy everything. He's like, go buy everything, and so it was a lot easier for me to walk in and a realtor would be like, oh, do you have the money to buy this sort of thing? Because they're looking at me. I'm like some young 30 year old with my Justin Bieber swooped haircut and stuff like that. And um, I'm like, of course I do. I've got a $2 million line of credit. Like I can buy anything as long as it's a deal. And so it did give me that, that confidence, but you are right to some degree, there's more money. And, and that's what I remember. One of my other investor friends, he said, there's more money than there are deals, but just make sure it's a deal. Cause otherwise yeah. the money will tell you. So, um, you know, with your, with your AI tool and things like that, this question might be pretty obvious and might be an easy setup, but for people to invest significant amounts of capital with you, uh, they have to like, know, and trust you. What are you doing for those sort of things these days? Yeah. So, um, you know, it comes with a, sometimes a little bit of imposter syndrome because I feel social media drives that because you look at people online, they're like, just signed another multifamily, you know, 400, 400 units, you know, apartment building. And I'm sitting here, I'm like, well, I've got, you know, three properties underneath my belt, like moving into the fourth. And, uh, you know, I, I, I love what I do. I love investing in properties. I love the value add. It's, it's just exciting. Like I said, it's kind of like gamifying it and also mm-hmm. like building a, a life for you and your family down the line if you're patient enough. So for me, it's like, I just want to, I just want to share because I, I, there's, like I said, a little bit of that imposter syndrome because like is four enough. Well, when you look at someone who's done zero, it seems like a mountain. When you look at someone who's done 400, you just seem like it's like completely invaluable to what you've done. So um, for me, it's, I just like sharing what I'm doing and the right people will, uh, will end up messaging me and starting a conversation because at the end of the day, you can't force, you know, you, you can't be forcing yourself out, uh, forcing yourself to put, to put forward a product, a solution an investment strategy without actually be true, true to what it is that you're investing in. So I'm just investing in the things that I like to do that I find interesting that I can get a return for myself or any of my JV partners. So I find like, you know, if you build it, they will come. So share your own story, share what you're doing, and you'll find the right people that want to invest with you. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, definitely. It's the whole 
uh, the social media mask, right? Are they really closing a four four hundred unit apartment, or are they standing in front of somebody else's apartment? You never know. But the results speak for themselves. Typically, you, you can see, um, you know, you can see the forest for the trees in a lot of cases. So, if people want to connect with you, they want to find out more. Uh, what should they do? How do they find you? Yeah, so um, you can find me on Instagram. It's at Andrew Billack. Um, you can check out my website, andrewbillack.com. Um, mm-hmm. If you're interested in AI, social media marketing, um, Instagram funnels to help facilitate more leads, build your online presence, you can check out realtorhub.ai. Cool, cool. Well, I really appreciate your time and stopping by and bringing a little bit of AI to the game because I think uh, real estate and real estate agencies, especially as investors, it's been really, what's the word, uh, manual. It's been very manual for a very long time. And, um, you know, these AI tools are popping up to kind of simplify the transactions as well as the day-to-day grind of the real estate business. So I appreciate your hard work in that regard. Yeah. Cheers, Bryce. Thanks for having me on. I really appreciate yeah. it. No problem. Until next time, guys, we'll catch you on the next episode. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed that episode. And as always, if you want to listen to more daily interview content, make sure you subscribe. And if you're an active real estate investor and you're doing deals and you'd like to get featured on this show, then just head over to daveinterviewsyou.com. Now at moneypartnerformula.com, we help real estate investors to create a process for predictably getting capital so they can do more deals without relying on hard money lenders or the banks. We do this by building them a private capital marketing system. Now, if you want help turning yourself into a big money capital attraction machine, then book a call with our team to see how we can help. Just visit moneypartnerformula.com to find out more. All right, take care, and we'll see you on the next interview.